us understand whether or not we should be a worried lot in Kenya is uh, the regional economist for Stanbic Bank Kenya. That is Gibran Kereshi. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for um, is there a strong reason for us to worry about Donald Trump's presidency, especially his economic policy? I think the cloud of uncertainty associated with a Donald Trump presid presidency is unprecedented. Mm -hmm. um, we all hoped initially that Donald Trump, the presidential candidate, may you know, be do a different Donald Trump, the president. But uh, some of his punitive you know, protectionist policies seem like they may come to fruition. Um, of course, global growth is not on a very solid footing right now. But uh, we need to look at how diversified Kenya's exports are. Mm -hmm. And as you correctly mentioned in your introduction, uh, we have, over the last couple of years, uh, intensified our exports through uh, the African Growth Opportunity Act. Right. And, uh, you know, that would be a concern because we're exporting about an odd $500 million a year. Mm -hmm. But I think there's a lot more that we export, export, which means that, you know, it's not like things are going to fall off a cliff. However, not looking at it in isolation, we have some problems at home as well. Mm -hmm. challenges with the weather that could uh, dent agriculture exports. And of course, uh, you know, the economic partnership agreement still hangs in the balance. Uh, you know, that's a significant part of uh, our export base. And, uh, you know, the Brexit vote as well, we, we're not too sure what's going to manifest after, out of the ne negotiations, um, you know, come April, March. So that could also be a downside risk to export earnings in Kenya. Right. So there are some, and maybe let's just bring it back to Kenya. Um, there's some who think that maybe the elections are the most worrying thing um, locally. We're likely to see inflation also shoot up as a result of the dry weather conditions we're experiencing currently. Um, but how much more uh, do we need to worry about the current situation and the different factors, both internal and external shocks? It is a well-known fact that when agriculture doesn't do well, the Kenyan economy doesn't do well. Mm -hmm. And at this point in time, we are in a period where many have uh, coined this as, you know, as a drought. And uh, we know that the short rain season in November was poor. And uh, our concern is that if the long rains in March, April, May don't come to the party, that we could have two consecutive periods of no rainfall. Mm -hmm. That would bring down agriculture production quite a bit. But it could also lead to higher food inflation. And I think we're already seeing that trend. Mm -hmm. So predominantly uh, over the next you know, three or four months, we will see headline inflation edge higher. But I think it will be primarily because of food. I don't think uh, domestic demand-driven inflationary pressures are that concerning at this point in time. Right. Um, but again, I think, uh, you know, generally speaking, uh, when we look at the election and certainty that could you know, brew over the, over the coming months, it is a concern. Not just the presidential elections in August, but I think some of the primary elections that could be, begin around April. And, you know, it's, it's, it's concerning for foreign investors because of, you know, some of the, the history that we have uh, in, with elections in Kenya. And on the back of that, it wouldn't be surprising for us to see uh, a slowdown in tourism receipts. Mm -hmm. All right, and let's talk about the Forex reserves. Uh, as we speak, we are at close to $7 billion. And uh, the governor thinks, you know, this could take us by, you know, take us through 4.5 months cover, input cover, that is. Um, but is there any reason for us to worry that maybe it could further dwindle? Because it seems to be at the lowest in about 12 months. Well, I mean, the trend between October and December was concerning. Mm -hmm. But uh, this was a period where... I think we generally saw a lot of portfolio outflows, uh, predominantly from the NSC. Um, and at the same time, we had some external debt obligations in December. But looking ahead, I think, you know, based on the, the budget for 2016, 2017, it looks like the government still has in the pipeline to actually issue an external loan. Mm -hmm. And that should help boost reserves. But when you look at the IMF standby precautionary facility, uh, in the event of an extreme balance of payment shock, uh, the central, the government could still draw upon that facility. And when you look at the, the drought situation, I think that classifies as a balance of payments shock. So I don't think, you know, the standby facility would be drawn upon just yet. But uh, I don't think reserves will continue falling over the next, you know, one month or so. I think there will be some capital inflow uh, within the balance of payments that will support that. All right. Um, speaking of uh, global trends, um, I'm starting to think that maybe we are, there are certain factors we are ignoring, that maybe the pump prices or fuel prices for that matter. And uh, maybe we are likely to also see effects coming from that end. But what are your thoughts on this? 
So we at Stanbic Bank actually have a very range-bound view on oil. Mm -hmm. We think oil prices could meander sideways for the, for the better part of this year. Mm -hmm. And that's because despite the cut in production by OPEC and non-OPEC uh, you know, parties late last year, we're convinced that the marginal producer is now the U.S. shale oil industry. And as prices recover even closer to $60 per barrel, we'll potentially see rig investment in the U.S. shale oil industry increase. We'll see production come back to the market. And I think the higher we go, the faster we can fall. So now we're not projecting uh, you know, higher oil prices, but we also acknowledge that the scope for international oil prices to fall is still quite limited. Mm -hmm. So I think an average oil price of $57 per barrel looks likely for 2017, especially because global demand for oil is not very robust. But when we look at you know, the, you know, the, the possible linkages that could have on our inflation basket here and pump prices, um, you know, we will see uh, potentially high revisions upwards over the next coming months. Mm -hmm. But the, the more pertinent concern, apart from food, is really, you know, power prices. Because if we're not going to have enough rain, then we're going to potentially uh, run the thermal, you know, turbines and generators. And, and that could cost us a lot more. So that's probably a bigger upside risk for headline inflation. Uh, than, you know, squarely oil prices. Right. And just recently, you know, the principal secretary for East African Affairs was, was, was actually alluding to the fact that exports from Kenya into regional countries have gone down. Um, and while we are thinking of banking on regional trade to, you know, help us get through some of the external shocks, we are also worried about how we are faring with our neighboring countries. So on that front, how best do you think the economy should deal with some of these uh, unexpected mm. situations? I think it's clear that when we look at the progress of uh, regional integration, it's, yeah. it's not been that rapid, mm -hmm. uh, to put it politely. Um, and you know, some of the prerequisites that will be required to boost regional integration and, 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 ex and, and trade generally, uh, you know, the first thing is its infrastructure. Mm. And I think you know, some of these things are already being done. And you know, we're going to perhaps see the return on investment, if you like, on these projects over the medium term. Um, you know, we're not going to see uh, the multiplier impact straight away. So I think infrastructure, infrastructure, infrastructure is important. Right. Um, it's, it's very key. But along with that, we need to ensure that we you know, adhere to some of uh, conducive measures for good economic growth, uh, reduce barriers for you know labor. Uh, mm -hmm. free, we need free movement of labor along with goods. And I think this will propel and you know catapult the East African community as a region uh, to you know some of the highs that a lot of people envisage. All right. Well, thank you so much, Gibran. Gibran Kereshi is uh, the regional economist at Stanbic Bank Kenya, uh, talking to us about the Trump effect and, of course, what else we should expect from the macro environment, uh, globally speaking. But